Hey everyone, it's Melissa from Welcome to the Woods. In my lake house kitchen remodel, the next project to do is countertops and I want to cast them from concrete. So I'm clearing my living room space here as an area where we can put down melamine sheets and rails and cast the counters. Now for this project, I'm gonna have a little help from DIYConcrete.com. They sent two of their experts, Brandon and Isaac, to help with this part of the process. So Brandon and Isaac helped me measure out the exact dimensions of the counters that I want to create. And we're going to be putting down foam rails as well as just like modifying these melamine sheets so that the concrete can get poured and solidify into this mold. Now, normally you would use a double-sided super sticky tape to put down the rails, but they didn't unfortunately remember to bring that with them. So we improvised and glued and screwed down the foam rails in order to prevent the concrete from pushing against them and changing the dimensions as it cures. The height of the foam dictates the depth of your counter. So you can actually get these foam pieces in whatever depth you want. I chose an inch and a half, but you can do two inches, you can do one inch, whatever you like. I am casting these counters as a stable substrate for me to actually put another concrete coating over them in the future. So you'll see in this later in this video what I'm going to do to modify them, but you can use this product to cast concrete counters that you're going to flip and use as is. You just need to do a couple extra steps when making your mold so that your sides all come out smoothly. And DIYConcrete.com has all the products for a project like this if you want to try DIY concrete counters yourself. So once our foam rails and our molds were created, then we made sure to wipe everything very, very clean, vacuum it out, make sure nothing was gonna interfere with the concrete pour. The concrete we're using is a very special formula that is fortified with three different types of polymers that make it super, super strong. You can flip them over onto your counters only 24 hours after casting, and they fully cure in seven days. I've used products like this from DIYConcrete.com twice before, once when I recovered my cement step outside, and then another one, my very popular faux concrete fireplace surround. Their products have impressed me every time I've used them with how detailed the instructions are, how DIY friendly they are, and the durability and the beautiful look that you can get from these concrete products. It just allows you to get really creative. So once you have your concrete solution mixed up to the consistency of about pancake batter, it's time to pour. You wanna pour your first layer into your mold and actually um, kind of push it up onto the sides of the rails because you're gonna need more than one bucket mixed up in order to fill your concrete slab. And this just prevents any color variation from bucket to bucket showing on the concrete slab if the entire first bucket is all the visible parts of the piece of concrete. So once enough concrete was poured that it reached the top of the rails, it equals an inch and a half thickness, pat it down into place. A lot of times other concrete products you need to use like a mechanical vibration of a sander or something to get the bubbles out, but this stuff settles beautifully all on its own and you just need a light pat. We created three pieces. You can see the cutout we did for the sink on the long piece and the other two short pieces. One is for a single cabinet and the other is for the other part of the L-shaped counter. Now on an L-shaped counter with these concrete counters, you're gonna to want to butt them up next to each other and I'll show you how I do that in the future. The next evening, it was time to release the counters from their molds and flip them over onto the cabinets. I called in my family to help with this. First, we removed all the screws and then we started to take off the foam rails. Now, because I'm putting a topping on my counter, the foam rails didn't have a smooth edge with tape. We omitted the tape. And this actually caused a problem because the foam rails made it so that the concrete was a little bit hard to get free from the molds we had created. We tried prying it off with a crowbar, but it just kept busting into little pieces like this. This took quite a bit of time to get off. It would be much, much easier if I was going for a smooth edge on the counter and we had taped it. But our solution in the long run was to run like this little drywall knife along the rail and then pry up at the same time. This allowed us to get off all the foam rails eventually and we were ready to flip it. Of course, since these are solid concrete, they're quite heavy. The long piece I think weighed like 200 pounds maybe. <laughs> it took multiple people to carry it. And don't worry, I'll be buying my dad a new belt for Father's Day. 
even though those two areas where the sink cutout is are very thin, they did not break. We were careful to flip the counter up on its end and carry it like that. So there was way less pressure on those thin pieces. This is the safest way to carry something heavy. In order to get the short piece of the L counter to butt up nice and flush next to the long piece of counter, I had to actually cut through the drywall a bit to make a little pocket to slide the concrete counter into. And this gave us wiggle room so that we could adjust that piece of counter into place and get those two seams to come up tight. The other short piece of counter we just put right on top of the singleton cabinet. You'll remember this is the cabinet that I refinished. It was like a box cabinet and I made it look like all the others. If you missed my cabinet refinishing video, you might enjoy watching that. You won't believe what these cabinets used to look like before I got my hands on them. I'll link it in the cards. Now with the concrete slabs in place, if you were just doing concrete counters as is, this is the point where you would let them cure and then seal them, but I'm not. I'm going above and beyond and I'm doing a concrete look backsplash that flows right onto the counter and I'm actually going to color it to be a soft, dreamy beige. So here I am taping off my cabinets. I don't want to get my brand new paint job wrecked. To prep the sheetrock backsplash to accept the Microtech concrete topping, I'm putting on a waterproofing membrane. This is going to both help with adhesion and it's going to prevent the concrete layer from cracking over time. I put on two coats of this stuff. It's a little bit stinky, so I did it on a day where I could air out the place and I wore a respirator. You roll it on with a thick nap roller, like a half an inch or higher. You want to make sure that it's fully coating the sheetrock. I did not cover the concrete counters with this because the Microtech topping should stick to those just fine as is. It was at this point that we placed the last slab into the corner to create the L-shaped counter and I didn't place it with the other two slabs because I needed an electrician to be able to get behind that cabinet and wire in a 220 volt for the range I'm getting. But here I am with my husband shuffling it into place and you can see how it was super crucial to cut out that little extra space in the drywall so that we could shimmy it in. It is a very tight fit. I also cut out um, some of the drywall on the back side so that my opening for the range was exactly 36 inches. I did end up casting this piece of concrete just a little bit too long so it was sticking off the cabinet more than I wanted it to be. For the seam where the counter met the drywall, I wasn't really sure how to stabilize that so it didn't crack. I decided to run a bead of some caulk there and I also did that in the area where I cut out the drywall and the concrete slid underneath it. Here I'm putting up some more heavy duty protection because what I had before wasn't going to work as well for the Microtech topping. I'm literally going to be troweling on a concrete product across the counters and the backsplash and I expect it to get quite messy. So use a huge tarp. Now I'm going to mix this up. It is mostly just water and then the specialty concrete powder. This process with the Microtech topping comes in two parts for the two different layers you're going to apply. The first layer is generally darker. You start with the gray powder and I also colored mine partially with the sun buff colorant, but you wouldn't have to color this layer. When I did my fireplace, I only added the color into the second layer, which was like the white powder. So with this first layer, I'm going to mix this all up and you're going to want to be really thorough because the colorant can leave little streaks if you don't get it thoroughly, thoroughly mixed with the concrete powder and the water. Now this Microtech topping gets troweled on and at first I started troweling it onto the counter itself. I quickly realized that this was going to dry fast. It was absorbing into the concrete quickly. So I switched gears and decided to move to the backsplash because I knew that the first layer on this waterproofing membrane wouldn't just soak in the way it was on the counter. This was also wise because on a vertical surface you're going to drip little bits of the topping off of your trowel, off your drywall um, knife. And so I wanted to make sure that I could catch those and they didn't mess up whatever I was going to do on the flat surface of the counter. I enjoyed the process of troweling this on because it's kind of artistic in a way. It is a wrist workout for sure, 
but I enjoy the movement and I enjoy the handmade look afterwards. It gives an awesome texture. You'll see troweling on this first layer on the concrete counters, it was absorbing very quickly. Remember these concrete counters aren't sealed with anything. So this Microtech topping that I'm putting on here is just absorbing right into the other concrete. It sticks beautifully, even on those vertical surface edges. I did let this first coat fully dry before coming back the very next day to add my second layer. This is how it looked dry. It looks very even, and once it's dry, even though there are spots where it's thin and you can see that red waterproof membrane underneath, you can't tell on camera. I did come across with a scraper with my drywall knife just to scrape any high points on the concrete before I traveled on the second layer. This is not necessary, but I just thought it would make it easier to get a smooth finish in the end. There were some ridges because, like I said, this is concrete, so it obviously builds on itself. The ideal is that you don't build it up more than like a sixteenth of an inch. You don't want a bunch of concrete to be in any spot. This is meant to be like a thin coating. Now the second layer mixes up almost exactly the same as the first. The only thing I'd say is I tend to mix this one slightly thinner uh, because it absorbs into the previous Microtech layer quickly. In that same respect, you want to spritz your layer with water before trying to apply because it's going to be pretty difficult if you're not doing that in order to even push the product around. It'll just get chunky and absorb really quick. So this, you can see I got a really soupy second layer and I'm just gonna do the same thing. The second layer is a slightly lighter color. I still use the Sun Buff colorant, but I mix it in with white Microtech powder, so it ends up lighter. This is great because as you apply, you scrape off certain um, parts and that reveals the darker shade of the similar color underneath. This gives the concrete topping a beautiful movement and multi-dimensional look. So the first coat of Microtech topping took me about two hours and the second coat took me about three hours as I was pushing things around and tried to get an even finish. Now at this point you'll see in the corner there's like an opening and I didn't cover any of that with the Microtech topping. That's because I'm actually going to put a hutch there. So the house had this hutch um, sitting around and I noticed that it matched with the trim work it was also just slightly taller than the distance between the ceiling and the top of the counter. So when I was constructing the shelf, the floating shelf, I actually made it so that this 24 inch wide hutch would fit right in the corner. So I have to cut off the bottom so that it fits in the space and I want to get rid of this ornate detail anyway. I hammered this front piece off and then I'm using my jigsaw to cut the height of the entire hutch a little bit shorter. I made sure to place this hutch in its spot in the corner before my second layer of Microtech was dry so that I could use some of the material to patch areas where we accidentally scraped off the countertop finish trying to shove this hutch into place. It fit beautifully and I think this is going to be an awesome feature in the kitchen. After the second coat of Microtech topping had dried for a day, I came into sand. I'm using a random orbital sander instead of sanding by hand because it's just going to go a little quicker and I think I'm using 220 grit sandpaper to get everything smooth. Obviously you don't want ridges on your counter where food can collect. So I'm doing a really good job sanding all of this, the backsplash included. Now at this point, I liked how it looked, but I was a little sad because there was less color variation than I was hoping for. It looked a little bit flat and dull, but thankfully that is going to all change when we go to seal. Now the next step is to seal it and first you need to make sure the surface is extremely clean. So I vacuumed it and I used a sticky tack cloth to wipe all of the tiny bits of dust off of the backsplash and the counter. DIYconcrete.com's countertop sealer is a food safe polyurethane and it comes in two different parts, part A and B. So you'll need a measuring bucket, part A, part B, you'll need a high density foam roller, a tray, a mixing paddle, and then you clean this all up with denatured alcohol and I just have a rag handy in case. You measure out three parts A and then you mix in two parts B and you mix that with your paddle drill for several minutes until it's catalyzed. Now the instructions give you really specific times 
as far as how long to mix. And then also this has an induction time where you have to just let it sit. The poly sealant then gets diluted with seven parts water for this first coat because we're going to prime the counters. And basically we want as much of this product to absorb into the concrete as possible. Once it stops absorbing it, then we can put subsequent layers of this same sealer, but diluted to only like one part sealer, two parts water on top. Now this sounds maybe a little complicated, but don't worry, when you buy a product like this, it comes with really specific instructions, and if I can do it, you can too. Before applying the diluted primer coat of the sealant, you're gonna again spritz down the countertop material. This is because everything that you put on here just absorbs so quickly, so if you were to put it on dry, the part where you poured the sealer originally would maybe leave a little bit of a mark, as it absorbed quicker than the rest of the sealer around it. Saturating it in water prevents that. And I started with my vertical surface of the backsplash because again, you're gonna have stuff dripping. Now I wanna take this moment to invite you to follow me on other channels. You get to see fun short format video clips of what I'm working on on my TikTok. And you get to also see that on my Instagram reels as well as stories of behind the scenes on my Instagram. So look for those links in the description on this video. For horizontal surfaces like the tops of each of the counters, I did apply the sealant slightly differently. I spritzed it with water just like the backsplash, but then instead of rolling on the sealant, I actually poured it on to flood the counter with it. I am going to push this material all the way around and try and get as much of it as possible to absorb into the concrete. You can tell that it's not absorbing anymore once you start to see bubbles appear. And so at that point, I took a mostly dry roller and then back rolled everything. It's not easy to get all the bubbles to go away, especially with a foam roller, but if you let it sit for a little while and then you come check on it um, a couple minutes later, you can back roll and get rid of every single bubble to leave a perfectly smooth finish. I did coat two and three as well with the same product. I just didn't dilute it as much, but it was still quite thin as you can see in this clip, and I applied it the same way with the foam roller. The next day, the counters were dry enough that I was anxious to insert our drop-in sink and I also placed the faucet there. Obviously they're not fully installed yet but I just could not wait to see the finishes I had picked next to the concrete backsplash and counter and wow I love it. In fact when I first saw it I teared up a little. It is the perfect amount of texture. The sealer brought out some of those darker colors from the underneath and gave it that dimension I was looking for while still being subtle. It has this dreamy texture and the hutch is not trimmed out yet, but you can envision how it's all gonna start coming together. This kitchen is like 90% done. I have a couple more videos coming. I need the appliances and I need to do all the finishing touches. Obviously I need to get plumbing working in here and make it an actually functional kitchen, but I am so close I can taste it and I hope you can feel my excitement. Thank you to our sponsor, DIY Concrete. If you are interested in trying their products that I showed in this video, they are really awesome and you won't be disappointed. Follow the link in the description to shop. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to the woods. Stay tuned to see the final kitchen makeover reveal and all of the other large scale projects that I have lined up for this summer. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked this content and you can even hit the little bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. We will catch you again next week with another DIY from Welcome to the Woods.